These are the structural formulas for 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid and 2,4,5-trichlorophenoxyacetic acid, commonly known as 2,4-D and 2,4,5-T. From these chemicals are made a large number of closely related compounds, which are sold commercially for weed and brush control. In a typical year, 1960, 50 million pounds of these chemicals were sold. For weed control, the chemicals have been extensively used in a very dilute form as sprays to inhibit the growth of broadleaf weeds in fields of wheat and corn without damaging these crops. But when used in more concentrated forms, these powerful plant growth regulators will kill and defoliate much woody vegetation. The purpose of this film is to illustrate how such concentrates were used to kill vegetation, hindering military operations. Two instances will be depicted, the first at Camp Drum, New York, and the second in the Republic of South Vietnam. The Camp Drum operation occurred in the summer of 1959. There, a dense growth of trees and shrubs was hindering observation of much of the impact areas in the artillery ranges. Because of the danger of unexploded shells, it was too hazardous to send men and ground clearing equipment into these areas. Therefore, the Chemical Corps was asked to undertake the job of clearing the vegetation by using chemicals applied as an aerial spray. To cover the impact areas, totaling about four square miles, 30 missions were flown during which 2,300 gallons of agent were applied in crosswind swaths. In just a few hours after spraying, weeds and some of the more sensitive shrubs exhibited leaf curl and stem curvature. After two weeks, it was evident that the treatment would be effective. It was predicted that of the vegetation sprayed, there would be 90% kill of trees and shrubs within two years. Further observations were made one year and three years after the application. After one year, the chemical treatment had caused extensive top kill. Furthermore, the denuded trees showed no evidence of regeneration in the form of basal sprouting of new shoots. Observations made three years later, in early autumn of 1962, further confirmed the absence of regeneration. Although the area did contain low-growing shrubs and annuals, this vegetation did not hinder observation of the impact areas. The bright autumn colors of untreated trees in the foreground pinpoint the site of one of the artillery observation posts. These colors are in sharp contrast with the somber grays and browns of the treated trees in the impact areas across the river. Because most of the trees in the treated impact area are incapable of regeneration, improved visibility over the range is expected to last for a number of years. Two years after the Camp Drum mission, the Advanced Research Projects Agency of the Office of the Secretary of Defense initiated a project to determine whether visibility in troublesome jungle vegetation in the Republic of Vietnam could be improved by aerially applied chemical sprays. In that country, jungle growth, swamp foliage, and roadside vegetation retains its leaves the year around. Consequently, it affords ideal concealment to guerrilla terrorists who sporadically attack the free people of Vietnam. Accordingly, a two-man test team from Fort Detrick, Maryland, was assigned to test the feasibility of removing the concealing vegetation with herbicides. The tests were conducted from July 1961 to February 1962. Because of the urgency, the tests could be conducted only with disseminating devices and those chemicals and plant growth regulators which were immediately available. Preliminary tests were performed with two commercially formulated products, Dinoxol and Trinoxol. Dinoxol contains the esters of 2,4-D and 2,4-5-T, while Trinoxol contains only the 2,4-5-T ester. Later, the undiluted esters of 2,4-D and 2,4-5-T were tested. Color bands of pink and purple identified drums of these materials. In addition, small quantities of other chemicals were used in a few experiments. The spray equipment, which was hastily shipped to Vietnam for assembly, had never been used to disperse herbicidal materials. This H-34 helicopter is fitted with the U.S. Navy Hydol, 
which stands for Helicopter Insecticide Dispersal Apparatus Liquid. This map shows the locales of the Vietnam tests. The first location near Kontum was a region of frequent guerrilla activity. Trees in a forest along the roadside north of Kontum were sprayed with dinoxol. Although a heavy rain occurred later in the day, it apparently had little adverse effect upon the action of the chemical. These trees are seen two months after treatment. Because about 70% of the trees were dying or were already dead, the results were considered excellent. A variety of tests were also conducted in several localities near Saigon. Here, spraying was by an AD-6 equipped with an Aero 14B spray tank. Dinoxol was the agent used. The growth was 75 to 90 percent mangrove with the remainder of the vegetation of undetermined species. The vegetation is shown as it appeared two weeks after treatment. Mangrove is obviously susceptible to dinoxol. Here is a more distant view of the same region five months after spraying. Many of the trees which are now dead lost their leaves within a month's time. This shows a forest near Benhua airstrip. A C-47 spray device, which was designed for insecticides, was used to spray the more viscous trinoxol. The chemical was laid down in three separate test swaths at treetop level. The three separate swaths can be seen here two and a half months after treatment. The green strip in the center of each swath is vegetation that was unsprayed because of the low altitude obtained in this test. However, this gap did not interfere with the objectives of the test. At Chon Tan, north of Saigon, roadside vegetation was sprayed, again using the C-47 apparatus and trinoxol. A month afterward, a relatively high percentage of the trees had been killed. Results were fair to good, even though inversion temperature conditions were being lost at the time of spraying. Loss of these conditions results in unwanted dissipation and drift of the spray off target. At the Vietnam Army headquarters near Saigon, grass and other unwanted vegetation were treated with dinoxol. At the time of the spraying, air currents carried the spray to several nearby kapok trees. A week later, the vegetation had withered. The trees, which were exposed only to the drift of the spray, also showed a marked effect. The chemical was applied by a buffalo turbine equipment commonly used to spray insecticides in the orchards of the United States. Although rain fell one half hour after the treatment and continued for 16 hours, the chemical was still effective, as witnessed by these fallen bamboo leaves. Besides defoliating bamboo trees, dinoxol was very effective on other species, such as kapok, papaya, and banana trees. One month after the dinoxol application, the effect of the chemical is noticeably more pronounced. Near Long Tan, a roadside was treated with dinoxol sprayed from a buffalo turbine mounted on a two and one half ton truck. Now the same vicinity 18 days after spraying. The brown is due to desiccation of the foliage. Results were considered fair to excellent considering the terrain, the type of vegetation, and the distance to which the spray had carried from the road. Also near Long Tan, an H-34 helicopter equipped with the Heidal apparatus was sent to spray a forested area north of Route 15 with cacodylic acid. This was the first instance in which cacodylic acid was used in defoliation operations. The chemical gave a quick effect. The Heidal equipment used was considered the most suitable available in Vietnam for spraying this somewhat corrosive chemical. Ten days later, the drying action of the chemical can be seen. Here is the region as it appeared 12 days after treatment. However, this swath was clearly apparent and quite impressive starting three to four days after application of the chemical. Most of the treated foliage had dried up or shriveled, although there was some evidence of regrowth starting in about a month's time. A grassy area containing some bamboo at the Vietnamese Navy Yard near Saigon was also sprayed with cacodylic acid using the Hydol system. 
the growth varied from two to ten feet high. A week later, the vegetation was dry enough to burn. This experiment showed that cacodylic acid was suitable to condition this kind of vegetation for burning, even though the ground was swampy underneath. Bamboo, banana, deciduous trees, and native grasses are seen three days after they had been hand sprayed with the undiluted commercial product called Diquat. Since very limited quantities of this material are produced, only five gallons were available for testing in Vietnam. This chemical desiccated all types of vegetation within four days after spraying in these small plot tests. To scale up the defoliation tests, U.S. Air Force C-123 aircraft were fitted with modified hourglass equipment and brought to South Vietnam. In this sortie, flown in mid-January of 1962, a combination of 2,4-D and 2,4-5-T was sprayed on designated areas along each side of Route 15 from Benoit south for about 43 miles. Spray booms that attached to the wings had been fabricated for the C-123. Each boom mounted 84 nozzles adjustable to different angles of spray delivery. Test flights were made at a minimal altitude of 150 feet and a speed of 130 knots. This altitude was sufficient to allow the spray from both booms to blend before settling on the foliage below. The runs were made at dawn, since this is considered the best time to obtain inversion conditions and settling of the spray. Because of the dryness of the season, and because the hourglass system was not initially designed for very high flow rates, reaction of the upland vegetation to the chemicals was not considered entirely satisfactory. However, in lowland mangrove areas, where water was plentiful for growth, the response to chemical treatment was excellent. It should be remembered that the speed of reaction of vegetation to chemicals depends upon a number of factors, the more important ones being, one, good growing conditions, two, type of vegetation, and three, efficiency of spray application. Accordingly, satisfactory response to treatment may require from two weeks to two months, depending upon these factors. In summarizing the work in Vietnam, much worthwhile information was obtained, and the mission was successful, although conditions for operations were far from ideal. As a result of these tests, defoliation spraying was placed on an operational basis. Those chemicals already proven most effective as defoliants will continue to be used until faster acting types can be developed. It should be noted that the chemicals, when used appropriately, are harmless to man and do not render the soil unfruitful beyond one agricultural season. Defoliant operations are continuing on a daily basis in the Republic of Vietnam. Targets are vegetation along lines of communication, roads, canals, power lines, and railroads. The number of ambushes in sprayed areas has dropped to practically zero. Military work has thus been established.